Hi and welcome to my quick run through here of uh, Citadel's solo AI variant by Chris Dorrell from uh, BoardGameGeek. Um, this is a solitaire variant uh, that plays against one AI component um, and I'm going to show you how it plays. It's quite quick. So to start off I start with two money and four cards as usual. The AI starts with four gold uh, and no cards. No one's the king at the moment so the king token is over here. So what we start off with is we shuffle the cards quickly. The solo AI gets the first card at the top. We discard two cards and they are face up so we can see what they are. I then get to choose from these two um, and then these will get discarded in a minute. So now which one do I want it? Uh, I know the thief is out and they don't really, the assassin's not very useful at the moment so I think I'll take the king. We then put one more face up and the last two face down. And you'll notice there's not a lot of point having these face down now because I can see everything out there that's out on the table apart from that one and it doesn't matter. But if I was the assassin or the thief, I would not be allowed to see which one of these three cards are. Then I'd then have a one in three chance uh, of choosing what the AI is to, to kill or steal from. So I've chosen mine. We'll reveal the assassin, the, the AIs, and he is the architect. So the king goes first. These are the cards I have to build. Uh, I will still want to take the king token as well to remind me about that. Um, so I will take my action. I'm going to take two gold. And I'm going to build. Um, I've got no district, no yellow district, so I don't get any bonus at the moment. And I will build uh, the docks for three, I think. So three there for the docks. Let's put these down here, I'll put my hand over here so you can see that. The architect. Now the AI, what he does on his turn, he will uh, trigger any bonuses that he has that he can. Then he'll get income, so he's currently got four gold. If he has four more gold, he will get one more gold. We reveal two cards from the deck and he can build whichever he can. So the most expensive he can, which is in this case the palace, is for five. He has five. He's going to pay all of that. And he has built the palace. The other card gets discarded. And that's the end of that round. We discard the characters, we shuffle them up again. Nice quick shuffle. And then we deal again. He always gets the top one. Two always get discarded face up there. And now because I'm the king, I get three to choose from. These two will be discarded face down. So I need to choose from all these. Now, as I have a dox, and as the AI isn't very intelligent about how he chooses, I will probably take the merchant to get my bonus here. So I'll have the merchant. So they get discarded. All those face down. And now we'll see what he is. He is the warlord. Okay, so I'm the low number I have merchant. I get to go first. So I will take my income of two. My action. I will get my bonus gold for being merchant. Um, I have no greens here, so I'm not going to get more of this, so I'll take the bonus now for the docks. I have five to build, so I will build a battlefield for three. Okay. So the Warlord, the AI is playing. He will get, he would get any bonuses from red districts, but he hasn't got any at the moment. Uh, so he will, if he has no zero to, four, zero to three gold, he will get two gold. This is income. And he only reveals one card. He can't afford to build that, so that goes away. If he can't afford to build any, he will get a bonus card at the end. That's the end of that. Oh no, there's the one other action, of course, that the Warlock can do. He can destroy a district. So he will destroy the most expensive district he can. Now they're the same cost. He can afford to destroy either of those, because it only costs him two. Um, randomly, he will just choose the battlefield. He'll destroy that. There we go. And that's cost him two to destroy. So that's the end of that round. On to the next round, we shuffle up. So this, this variant does rattle on rather quickly, which is quite nice. Discarded, we have the Warlord and the Magician. Now I didn't get the King, I wasn't the King last time, so this is slightly different to a multiplayer game. If no one is the King in a round, no one gets the bonus. You don't hold on to it if you were the King the previous round. So I only get to choose from two. 
the thief or the bishop. Now I don't, I know the warlord's out, so I don't need to worry about protection from the warlord. But there's not much point having the thief because the AI's only got one gold at the moment. He will get an income of two, but I don't think there's much, there's only one in three chance of me getting that right. So I'll go for the bishop for now. One more discarded face up, the other two face down. Okay, so I don't need to guess, so I can immediately turn over his card. He's the merchant. So I get to go first again. So as the bishop, I will get, I will take my action, I will take two gold. I will build the church of two. And then I will trigger my income for blue districts, which you can obviously do at any point during your turn. So that I still have to build that another turn. Merchant, so he'll get his bonus gold, which is how the AI does the merchant. He has less than four, so he gets two gold income. And he will reveal one card, which is the tavern. I'm just going to double check the wall for his income. Yes, that's right. So if he has four or more gold at the start of his turn, he will get a one and then choose two. But as he didn't have four to start with, he'll just pick one here. So he can afford to build a tavern. He'll build that for one. There we go. That's that round up. We shuffle up again. There's the AI. No one was king. So we get two down. All oh, the thief and assassin are out. That's good. They're mine to choose from. Um, as I have a blue, I may as well go for the bishop. Or I might want to build the watchtower. It might be useful to try and destroy some of his buildings. So actually I will, I'll go for the wall all this time. Uh, one more face up, two face down. I'm not the for assassin, so I don't need to guess, so I can immediately reveal that. He's the king. He'll get to play a marker, which means I get less choice next turn. So he's the king, so he gets first go. He will get an income for his palace. He now has four gold, so he gets one gold and two cards and builds the most expensive he can. Now he already has a palace, so he's obviously not going to build that. He can afford to build a fortress for four, for five, sorry. Palace gets discarded. Five gold go away. One, two, three, four, five. That's the end of his turn. My turn is the warlord. Now, I want to go and, I'm going to want to build this, which only cost me one. And I want to destroy one of his, I can afford to destroy that. So I'm not going to get any gold this turn, I'm going to get cards, because I'm going to run out of cards soon. And I'll go for the manor, because that's got more points at the end, I think. Uh, I have no redistrict, so I don't get any income at the moment, but I'm going to build the watchtower for one, which means I get an income of one for the red district. I have three, I can destroy his tavern for free. So his tavern goes away, I don't need to pay anything. So the end of the round, discard that. Now the AI was king last time, which means, again, there's a slight difference here about how the cards get. He still gets the first one, the second and third get the face up there. I have to have this one, I get no choice in the matter. Then two more get discarded kind of face up, and two, one of the two gets discarded kind of face down. I have to be the merchant. He might be the assassin, which would be bad for me. Let's see what he is. Oh, he's the magician. That's okay. So he takes his turn first. Now, the, what the foe does for the magician, he discards. I'm, he makes me discard my entire hand and replace it with an equal number of cards from the deck. So I'm losing my mana. And I get the town hall. That's quite nice, but I can't afford that just yet. So on his turn he has no gold, so he gets two gold. He gets to reveal one and see if he can build it. No way he can build the throne room at the moment for six gold. So that's his turn over. Oh yes, because he didn't, didn't build, he gets another gold. I'm going to put that away now to remind me that no one was doing this turn. So my turn, I'm the merchant. I'm going to take two gold. I'm going to take my merchant bonus of a gold. I get my green income of a gold, and now I'm flush with cash I can afford to build the town hall for five. One, two, three, four, five. There we are, turn over. 
I have four, he has two. So I'm not going to gain them just yet. So let's shuffle up. Give that one. Two face up. Two face up here for me to choose from. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to destroy any of his. There's not much point in me being the warlord. But the architect, you see I've run out of cards, that will be useful. So I'm going to go to the architect. Get rid of the warlord. One more face up. The other two face down. He is the merchant. So he gets his turn first. So he gets his action bonus of one. He has four gold, so he only gets one gold income. But he gets two cards to choose from. He can build the four, so he'll build the four. That gets discarded. One, two, three. One by the way. My turn with the architect. Now I'm going to get to draw two cards and keep them, so I may as well take income of two gold for the architect. So I guess. Take two cards and keep them. University, very nice if you can afford it. And the Cathedral for five. Now, I can't afford to build either of those, annoyingly, because I could have built up to two. But that's fine, I can save up and use plenty of build those later. So the end of the turn. No one was king, so the king marker stays out. And we shuffle up. There's the AIs. Two are out, Arctic Warlord. Two for me to choose from. Now there's no assassin, no thief out yet, which worries me a bit. The warlord's out there, so I don't need to worry about the bishop necessarily. The magician, now well, interesting, the magician is slightly different in this version. Um, if you are the magician, you can actually discard your hand and take back, uh, pick up from the deck two more plus one. So I could discard two, I could pick up three. If I discarded five, I could pick up six. If I had no cards, I could pick up one, which is quite nice. But I'm happy enough with those at the moment. So I'm going to be the bishop. One more face up, it's the king. Of course, if he's the assassin, this ruins my plan. Let's see. Oh, he's the thief. That's even worse, actually. He goes first, he steals all my money. There's no choice in that. So he gets his turn, there's no income. Um, no special action, sorry. So there are five. There. He gets one income. That's the telephone ringing, if you can hear that, ignore that. He gets to choose two and build one. He's already got a fortress, so he can't build that, so he'll build the docks for three. You can still see that. One, two, three. There we go. Right, and the bishop. I have no money because he's stolen this all, so I'm going to take money for my income. I'm going to get my bonus one there. But I still can't build anything because I can't afford it. So I'll have to pass the building. So we have four buildings to four now. Let's see how we do now. That one. Still no one's king. Two face up there. Two face up here. Hmm. Again, Assassin, not very useful in this variant because you only have a 1 in 3 chance of guessing. You have no way to anticipate or predict what he's going to be. Um, so I'll go for the Merchant because it gives me a better income, I think. Um, if the Thief wasn't out, that might be tempting because then the Assassin will block effectively the Thief from stealing from you. With one more face up, two face down. He's the Warlord. He's going to probably destroy one of my districts then. So let's see, I'm a merchant, so I go first. So I'm going to take my two gold income. I'm going to get my merchant bonus. I'll get two extra income from there. When I have two, four, six, eight, I will build my university. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Warlord. You will get an income of one for his fortress. He has four gold, he gets an income of one for building purposes, so he picks two. Uh, he can afford both of those. That's the most advantageous because it gives him a set of five colours. Let's just move those up there a bit so you can see them. So there we are, the temple. We'll build up for one. And then he gets to destroy the most expensive he can afford. He has four, so he can destroy five or less district. He will destroy my town hall, which is rather annoying. 
because that does wipe out all his money supply. That's that pound over. So in the next round, let's see what he is this time. He's with five cards on a four. Okay, so he's only there. Still no king change, no king this round either. Thief of a bishop. He has no mice to steal already at the moment. I may as well be the bishop. I'll discard that face up, those two face down. Who is he? He's the assassin. So with this variant, if he's the assassin, I die immediately, I have no choice. So he's the only person who has a go. He gets two income. He refills one card, he can't afford to build it. That goes to the bottom. He gets a bonus gold for not building anything. That's a quick round. But at least he didn't buy any more cards, more districts. Because that really can scupper you if he builds so quickly. He does build very quickly as they are. So, back again, one card, two down here. Two for me to choose from. I'll be the bishop again, I think. I know he's not really an assassin. One more face up, and the other's face down. He is the merchant. So I'll get my turn first. I will take, now this is costing me, this will cost five. So I will take two gold. Bonus gold from the church. And I can build the cathedral. Oops, that's a good district. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, one cost me. My money gone. Merchant. He gets his action bonus of one. He has four gold, so he gets one income. He reveals two cards. He can build the market, it's most expensive. There we go. Discard the tavern. Two gold for the market. Done. For the round. Oh, he gets his bonus income. So, exactly when he gets his bonus is not entirely clear in, the, in this variant rules. I play it as when it's most advantageous. If he has um, a matching district that gives him a bonus at the beginning of his turn, he'll get it immediately, um, which I actually forgot to do. It's very naughty of me. Um, if he builds one which is a matching colour and he hasn't had his bonus, he'll get it then. If he has taken his bonus and he builds another green, he won't get a bonus. But I'll allow his bonus there because I forgot to do it at the start. Okay, let's shuffle up. His. Bishop of the Architect for out. King of the Merchant. Now, do I want to take the King so I can get a better choice next time? Or do I want to get extra gold? Now I've got no gold and no cards. I think the Merchant's more useful. I'll discard the King. At least we know the Assassin's not there. The thief won't affect me because I've got no money. He's a thief. Well, I have no money, so that unfortunately he doesn't get anything extra. But he does get to go first. He'll get one gold because he has more than four more. He will choose a card to build. He has a market, so he can't put that. He will build the church for two. I'm the merchant. Um, now I'm going to get one gold here and one gold here. I will pick some cards as my action. And I will keep the now. I will get one bonus and one. I'll actually keep the prison because I'm going to be able to build that. Notice he's on seven cards, which is a bit dodgy. So I get one gold for the merchant action, I get a bonus for my docks, I have two gold, I can build my prison. There we go. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, and he's got seven. So it's very likely that the next round will be the last, which means I really would like to get a gold district, a noble district, so I can get a five colour bonus at the end. So he's there, those two are out, those two are my choice. I'm not going to bother with the assassin, I need the money for the merchant. There we go. Again, the thief won't have the effect if he's the thief, but he's the bishop, that's okay. So he gets to go first. He has got two blues, so he gets a bonus of two. He has four more, he only gets one gold, he gets a choice of two cards to build. He has one every colour, so the most advantageous is the poor house. So we'll pay for that. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now the poor house will give you gold, you have none at the end of your turn. 
which he can use. If, if he ever builds a, a purple district, which he can't utilise, then he will get a bonus gold for that as a, as, a, as a thing. Now, he's got now eight districts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's triggered the end of the game. So those can all go away. We're going to score up. I have a feeling he has probably won this, which is what usually happens. Keep his gold. Let's see what he's got then, shall we? 5, 10, 15, 19, 22, 24, 26, 27. He gets no extra bonus for that, but this one gives you one point for every gold at the end. 28, 29. Plus, he triggered the game. He's got one of each colour, so he gets an extra three, which gives him 32. He triggered the end of the game, gives him an extra four, which gives him 36. I, on the other hand, have not done quite so well. Quite helpful, I have a university, which gives me more, but I don't think I'm going to beat anywhere near 36. 8, 19, 11, 13, uh, 18, 19, 20, 21. I don't have one of each colour, so I don't get that bonus. I don't have 8. I won't get that bonus. 21 to 36. He beats me, as he usually does. So I hope you enjoyed that quick run through of the AI variant. Uh, thanks very much.